Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of High Minded with McCarter. I'm your host, McCarter. I'm super excited to have Chris Lynch with Loyalty Farms on the podcast today. What's up? Welcome. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm super pumped. I had a great tour of your facility about a month ago, and we actually met really happenstance, kind of like out in Boulder with some mutual friends, just like getting a drink, started talking connected on Instagram yeah, and just been chatting ever since. I'm super happy we could make this happen. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for coming by the grill. Yes. It's an open door policy. We always like to have guests. It was so cool. Yeah, here's some Loyalty Farms. Check them out. They're relatively new to the Colorado market, wouldn't you say? Yeah, so Loyalty Farms is a two-year-old brand that I started with uh, a good friend of mine of 20 years, um, right as... uh, right at the beginning of COVID. So I uh, spent the first year getting it off the ground, uh, going through the hardships, spent the second year kind of dialing it in and we're now releasing pre-packs and all of our branded uh, packaging. I love the branding. Thank you. So sleek, so clean. We I'm right now looking at a like black Mylar bag with the really sleek Loyalty Farms and then your signature like rocket yeah the rocket yeah can you tell us what what's like significance Uh, so we grow in a 1950s missile silo so uh, cool on the north (laughs) on the north end of boulder sits up on the mountainside so rather than go in the typical direction of pot leaves we wanted to incorporate you know the the facility into the branding so cool so and can you say a little bit more history the like that you told me on the tour of like what the missile silo is from yes yeah, so they did uh um they would shoot missiles into the atmosphere and test target them to shoot them down and then from there uh, so this was like cold war right this was like yeah in the 1950s okay so I'm like trying to pull out my it, u.s yeah history. so it's a little vague but uh <laughs> yeah did part- people know it was going on or was it like nah, secret? It was secret. Oh, was secret. I love secret shit. Yeah. So, and then uh, part of the Apollo was built up there. Um, what? And it sat vacant for many years. And then they call that area up there the campus. And it used to be a black market grow where the Colombian cartel grew out of. Oh, so, my gosh. That's right. The Colombian cartel was like in that building yeah. after yep. the missile uh-huh. silo stuff. And then like how, like how did they leave? Like what happened? I love this history. <laughs> yeah, there was a big raid up there. So I actually have a newspaper article linking my facility to the car- to the cartel. Um, it's, a, it's just got a lot of history up there, a lot of energy. Uh, is there any ghosts? There's definitely ghosts. Oh, it's haunted. Do you think it's the haunted. ghosts and like our energy is like happy now that it's like, I feel like it's transitioned so much from like. Oh yeah crazy kind of warfare bullshit secrets oh they're happy high ghosts right now and now it's like legal cannabis yay (laughs) so yeah we've been up there two years looking to expand um just taking our time so cool so it's like north north boulder north boulder right yeah so cool right on the foothills it's beautiful we got to plan photo shoots and stuff yeah we do and hopefully not get bit by a rattlesnake yeah i've had to kill a few up there um we have a herd of deer that are there every day. Sweet babies. Black bears uh, with their cubs. Oh. Pretty much have seen everything up there. Mountain lion, bobcats, coyotes. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. And but, I feel like it's just it's just like five minute drive past like the last like housing development in yeah, North Yeah, just Boulder. as you're headed out to the lions or towards us. So part. cool. I so. want like to build a house yeah. right there. I feel like it'd be the perfect spot. Oh, I've contemplated putting a trailer on my property many times <laughs> and just posting up a uh, gorgeous awesome. view of the of the uh, flat irons pretty grateful to be able to grow in a beautiful place like that that's so awesome mm-hmm. what type of uh strains are you growing and what, what did you bring me here it smells amazing yes yeah, so we have two packs that is the gummy worms which it's is like one of our purple. one of our newer strains. And I love gummy worms. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> Big gummy worm I, fan. I, as am I, actually. <laughs> like, so I get them yeah. from Sprouts. 
Oh, yeah. So they're like organic gummy I, worms. I used to be the guy that would walk the aisle and pick one off. Oh, but, yeah. You know. I still do that. And I say, well, I'm a loyal paying customer, so I can. So you can, yeah. Yeah, eat a few. Mm. Wow, so frosty. How do you have it and this? That's, that's the pink runts there. Oh, I love runts too. Great strains. They're also fruity. I love that you have fruity like fruity yeah we terps. have a we have a pretty awesome selection of genetics i worked pretty hard over the last year to fine tune my library to kind of meet everybody's needs but also my facilities on the smaller side of uh of conventional uh grows so it's not super big which i big. like because yeah. it keeps it craft so we do uh oh. between 15 and 25 pounds of uh a size flour a week Wait, sorry, can you say that again? 15 to 25 pounds of... Of, of like A bud, like, you know. Oh, like top... Bud, sh top shelf. Shelf, bud, okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, wow, this smells incredible. Yeah, that's the Sherb cream pie. Wow. Yeah. These genetics are really nice. They are. So uh, I spent a lot of time, worked with a lot of different breeders to bring in just a variety of uh, strains that I can continually cycle through. We harvest each strain three to four times a year. So we like to keep wow. it fresh, keep it new. And Can I smoke some? Yeah, light up. <laughs> Absolutely. I know you, you said you're not like a huge stoner, so you no, but, don't need but to gonna partake. No, we're going to smoke today. I don't, might not hit that big bong of yours. No. <laughs> we'll definitely smoke. Hell yes. Okay, let me pack some of this up in my big boy. So how did you, well, first of all, how did you get into Cannabis One? But then I also want to know why you chose the name Loyalty Farms. Sure. Um, you know, I'm like a, I'm a Colorado native kind of. An OG, if you will. Uh, I'm an OG, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was a pro snowboarder for 10 years living out of Breckenridge. Wait, what? I didn't know this about yeah. you. <laughs> And uh, this is why I love this because I find out so much about people that like I wouldn't I can't just be like tell me your life history like no yeah just meeting you randomly but then I can be like come to my podcast and then I can ask you all the questions I want to know yeah you can bring it <laughs> um so yeah during that era the way we made our money was by growing growing weed um you know we got so paid. you didn't have like a sponsor or yeah anything? we got well I did we got paid to snowboard but like to supplement the income and make, right. make a you know make a good living we were have some extra spending cash yeah, and so, like not so I, be strapped all the time yeah so i stem out of like the breckenridge blue uh blue river alma um summit county era yeah where uh you know back then as they Wait, say is that how you know austin uh, carlisle austin from hch yeah uh that's one way i know because yeah. he okay, so I just had him on last weekend. I have okay. his little photo up yeah, there. I'll up, show you. Austin? <laughs> is uh, actually how I got to know him and the crew. Uh, my ex girlfriend was living with his sister. To be, to be real, I love it. <laughs> yeah. What a small world. Yeah, my ex girlfriend was living with his sister. That's it, you know. <laughs> uh, and I know he and his sister are really tight. They are, and they're both great. Uh, and then that's I, hilarious. Uh, mutual friends of ours had a shop down in the rhino called foreign form for a few years that yep I, that, i've been to a, an event there yeah, so i helped run and operate that place um, wait no way yeah. i feel like i've definitely we've been at the same event for sure then. yeah yeah <laughs> i was there five days a week all summer long it was a good run we wow. had a good little a good family a good little community there and then what happened with that place um they basically like kind of moved next door to expand and then don't they do like events that place yeah we did events that a lot venue? of pop-ups yeah um, pop-ups that's what i've been to a bunch of pop-ups yeah. there but uh it just it fell victim to covid basically yep that's so sad so we had a really fun summer right before that covid hit um and that's how i got to know it's like the Austin summer of system. 1989 totally, like <laughs> totally yeah yeah so um no they're great uh i we actually uh, supply HCH with some loyalty product as well. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I want to know more of like the ins and outs of like how you view other cannabis brands. Like, especially when you're like, you know, some people and obviously it's, obviously it's friendly, but it's like, eh, we still kind of do the same thing. Like, I mean, I guess it, I kind of know how it is because it's with other influencers. I feel the same way. I'm like, oh, sure. 
respect. Like, but then yeah. obviously if they talk shit about you, then it's like, oh, game over. <laughs> no, nah, I know it's, it's a fine line, you know? Um, yeah. Nah, there's a lot of good brands out there. I look up to a lot of brands. I look up to a lot of brands out of state. Um, Can you name a couple? A couple brands that I, I look up to? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I like, there's a company out of Oklahoma called Ball Family. They're really awesome. That's a cool name. Yeah. Uh, but for Colorado market, you know, Snacklands has definitely shown a presence um, that I respect. <sighs> Yeah, they were, um, were the sponsor, main like the presenting sponsor of this event last At night. The event last night. Yeah, yeah, and they're pretty cool. I've they are cool. I've talked to the guy. I forget the main owner's name. He said he would come on the podcast like a year or two ago, and it hasn't happened. Oh, so. from Snaglands. Yeah, I don't think it's like Mike or something, or maybe not. My buddy's their head, head grower over there now. So oh, cool. That's yeah, cool. Nice. Well, they're definitely yeah, yeah. expanding. With they just opened that. Older store. Well, they just bought out Peaceful Choices. Yeah, they got Peaceful Choices spot. Yeah. R.I.P. Peaceful Choice. Mike yeah. Abrams, we love you. Yeah, I actually bought my girl from Mike. Oh, that's yeah. right, Mike. I love it. <laughs> yep. So I know Mike. He's down living the Puerto Rico life. Such a life. small fucking world. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, good for him. He's like, you know, slinging some mad legal cannabis down in Puerto for Rico. Sure. So check out. I for, he told me his brands, and now I forget off the top. Of I don't head. know what he's running down there. Yeah, I know, I know he's playing golf and doing yoga and growing weed on an he's island. He's living so. the pure. No. What is it? Pura Vida pure, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can never say it. Oh, uh -huh. uh, good for him. Love him. Yeah, he helped me a lot. Nice. Getting me out the gate. So he's a nice guy. Totally. And you know Aaron Shaw too, right? Aaron Shaw is my man. He's my man. Yeah. Oh, he can be your man. <laughs> he is a yeah. he's a homie. We got to get yep. him on video because he's a fucking character. I think he yeah. could be like a comedian if he wanted because. Well, I can truly say without Aaron Shaw, loyalty would not be standing today. I feel like a lot of brands would so, not be standing without. Shout out to Aaron. Yeah. He's my dude. Oh, we love you, Aaron. Yep. Love him so Absolutely. much. Oh, he's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just had on uh, Dutch Botanicals yesterday, uh, okay. Jenny Tran and okay. her team, and he introduced me to Jenny Tran as well. He's just such a connector. Is he? Good. Yeah, he's yeah. great. No, he knows everybody, the ins and outs. Yeah. How did he uh, help you with loyalty? Uh, so I used to sell. Uh, I knew Aaron in the past because I was a buyer and a seller for another company. Yeah. Um, but he helped orchestrate the deal with Mike to, yep. to get uh, the silo. He does that. He's a great uh, broker. And since then, he's been helping me kind of navigate and getting me into some stores that, you know. For so the he's selling loyalty for, he's brokering loyalty yeah, he, to yeah, other he, dispensaries? He, he, he reps us, yep. Nice. Yeah, I'm like, what do you call that? Like, <laughs> Oh, he's a broker. Okay, yeah. I'm like, wait. It, don't get it wrong. <laughs> we, we know what it is. I cut a check for him every, <laughs> every month. <laughs> He's like, hey, I love you, man, but uh, yeah, where's my money? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, where is my money, Aaron? <laughs> he, he knows what I'm talking about. Oh, he's so funny. I need to text him yeah. ASAP. I just say that because the market's tough right now. The, yeah, the, what are... The hardest part of the game right now is not even... It's not growing it. It's collecting, collecting the checks. These dispensaries are so, like, just to be real, ass backwards, and they don't... Yeah, you know, they don't pay, and they don't pay on time. Well, but why can't I don't understand? Like, I know this probably isn't in in an ideal world. Sure. Like, why can't you just say like it's like you give me the money right when I hand you the bag, or you don't get it? So a lot of people do COD, which I respect. Cash on delivery. Cash on delivery, absolutely. <laughs> but most people do around net terms of a fourteen day net. Okay. But that 14 day net is a piece of paper of an agreement that does not stand within the industry. So a 14 well, day Well, you net, can't like take that to court or anything, can you? No, nah, because it's, it's a rat race. They'll tell you to get in line. Um, I've been burned over $22,000 in two years by- Oh my God. That's like all the money I have to my name is $22,000. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and as a startup, I mean, loyalty, I'm I'm into I'm an independent artist. Like I built this with my own money. 
I have no investors. My business wow. and partner and I are 50-50. That's incredible. Um, unlike all these other companies, they go out and they do, they raise money. Yeah. And once they burn through that, they raise more money. You know, so loyalty is built on my shoulders and my, uh, my partner's shoulders. And these dispensaries are killing the little guys because they don't pay on time. Wow. Yeah. So a net 14 means like, like it means net like 30 to 40 days. By the, oh. t- by the time you get paid and it's like how do you pay how do you pay bills like every bills yeah. are due every 30 days like yeah so if i sold somebody 10 pounds at the current market rate of like well my current market rate let's just say ten thousand dollars you don't get that money for a month and a half that ten thousand dollars is no longer worth ten thousand dollars that money's already spent right that money's gone oh my gosh yeah so that's that's the that's, heart. that's so the battle. stressful so Aaron helps me track down my money. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah. He's like a debt collector. Yeah, he hates that part of it. Wow. But it's the truth. It's the hardest part of the industry. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is crazy. I wonder if I could make money being like, a, but I feel like no. Yeah, no, it's bad. How do you even make people pay if like? You got you to gotta have a lot of trust and just hope. And I work with a lot of larger companies that I know Although they might not pay me on time, I know they have it, so they will pay me. Yeah. Because after getting burned the 20000 from one guy who sold his store and then walked away and didn't pay me, and you know who you are. Oh, my God. Two years later, he's still giving me the runaround, you know? Like he's still in the area. Oh, yeah. 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 But there's no way you can take him to court. like. Not. He'll tell you to get in line. And then, in, <laughs> yeah, this is nuts. it is nuts. It's a, it's oh. a battle. It, it really like, it really can drain the fun out of like the passion and the love, you know, but that is like the overall truth is these dispensaries are screwing over the brands and the growers by not paying on time. Wow. Yeah. It's really, really sad to hear. So like a company like Snacklands, they just went out and they bought two dispensaries, right? They have one in Denver now and they just bought one in Boulder because how do you get away from that issue? You get your own store. Right. You sell your own product. Okay. And that's also like what cookies did. Yeah. And I feel like a couple others, but I can't think of them. But like, yeah, you have to have so much capital. Yeah. And yet again, you either have to go raise it because there's the federal banking laws are right. in effect can't get a loan so we can't, we can't go out and loan yeah so it's all your own money or you raise it or you get it from family or friends or investors wow so wow you're you i said this before i'll say it again you're doing the lord's work yeah i thank you yeah. the people thank you the people smoking your weed yeah. um wait first of all where can people get you besides or get loyalty farm, get you. Where can people get loyalty farms I mean, besides Eclipse? And we, yeah, we saw Eclipse is one of the main, uh, one of our main Boulder stores. That shout out to Eclipse. No doubt, they've taken care of me. They pay on time. Oh, uh, love them. Love them. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, Strawberry Fields. Uh, I've heard good are, things around the state. They carry a lot of my product. Nice. Um, Rocky Road Aurora. Shout out to them. They're great. They pay COD. They pay on time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just about consistency, you know? Yeah. Like you could sell to one store and they'll tell you how great your product is, look, tell you how much they love you, and then you never hear from them again. Wow. So, um, but our website is theloyaltyfarms.com and all of the dispensaries we sell to are on, on that. Nice. And do you use like LeafLink or whatever? No, I, I don't. I haven't gone down those roads. One, it's more of a, I've, I feel like it's I more talk, for edibles. And I talk stuff. to a lot of people, and there's not a return on your investment. Interesting. You know, you pay for the platform. Um, it works better for more disp- like dispensaries. Yeah. But for me, because I'm such a small grow, and we do. It's easier just dealing with like person to person. Yeah, 15 to 25 pounds of flour a week. We try to spread that out over 15 stores around the state. Um, all the way to the Western Slope, Summit County. Um, 
Denver, Fort Collins, Pueblo. There's even a few stores wow. out on the eastern side of the state that we'll, we'll take some flour out to. So that's awesome. I really love like the craft approach and yeah, yeah. I have a great team. I, I've uh, you know we're a small grow. We have uh, it's three full time employees. Uh, they're all highly dedicated, and myself. Um, and then my that, my business yeah. partner handles the back end, the administration, and the. That's nice you know. to have that like split up. Yeah. That you're like doing all the operations. And... Yep. So I oversee the day to day operations. I oversee the grow. I oversee the sales, the marketing, the branding, um, and the so the branding is what we're really starting to push now. Um, with it's the, so with the sleek. Packs. Yeah. So those will be dropping next week. It reminds me of like, um, like Dreamville and like. I don't know, just some like really cool like albums and just like yeah. people I respect, like J. Cole. Yeah, Dream, yeah. <laughs> it's my. D- I appreciate that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah no. I'm I, getting some J. Cole vibes. I, I rock J. Cole all the day. Hell yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I'm, I'm, Dreamville I, vibes. I just like my style has always been like black and white, clean, mm-hmm. like Johnny Cash, or like just keep it simple and clean. We don't like a lot of clutter, a lot, a lot of. Uh, a lot of noise, you know. Yeah. That's one of the other biggest problems. Just focus in the on the quality. Yeah, it's quality. It's it's what's in the bag, you know. Unfortunately, this industry people put a lot of low grade weed in fancy bags, <laughs> and it's <laughs> it's the truth, and it's sad, and it and it only and all it does is hurt everyone else. Yeah. You know. But it is. It's like a front. Yeah. So we like to keep it clean, keep it simple awesome wait so why loyalty like yeah so it was kind of a i don't know because you could have done like i don't know like trust or i don't know you know totally um there's like other there's there's a few there's like a line of things um i was laid off a couple weeks into covid uh from a grow that i had spent two years dedicated to helping uh they had they had a they had a dispensary attached we were in the process of doing a million dollar build out on the grill, which I was overseeing. I was the head flower buyer for them because I had connections through the state. Um, oh my gosh. And uh, no, it's all love. They only did me a favor, you know, but on a Friday. It's the universe showing you yeah. what you sh- like, yeah. your, where your path needs to go, in, in my opinion, yeah, but it so fucking that, sucks. Yeah, so that was my journey to loyalty was, uh, you know, abruptly getting loyalty loyalty go. loyalty i just uh, immediately yeah, think of that. yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> so i left there it was uh you know it was, i didn't you know i left there shook a hand no, no did they no owe you emotion. any money oh nah, they paid and okay. they're great and i actually sell loyalty to them now hey <laughs> full circle, full circle. Bitches. Yep, yep. <laughs> so um and do they pay on time <laughs> they pay cod <laughs> cash I'm just going to keep asking. That's the theme now. It is. It needs to be. (laughs) Who pays on time? I want people to know that that is the struggle of the game is not being paid on time. What if everyone had a bumper sticker that had to say, like, if they were a person that paid on time or if they paid late, just like in general, like in the world, Uh, out in life? It would be ugly. (laughs) I'd like to think I have a pays on time. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, mentality, but but yeah, I left there, uh, made a couple phone calls uh, the moment I walked out of that building, and set off on this journey to start something on my own. Um, so wow. the, the loyalty part came a little bit from that dude not being loyal to me, right? Uh, but also while I was fine tuning how to get loyalty off the ground. I was sitting with a buddy of mine watching um, South Park and yes. Tegrity Farms. Tegrity Farm. Yeah. So. Oh, little, we love you, South Park. A little of that up in there. And then, you know, every dispensary, for the most part, has a loyalty program. So, yes. You know, it's kind of like, here it is. We want loyalty, right? Um, we pride ourselves on like what's in the bag, not necessarily the, the bag. Yeah. And we pride ourselves on the consistency and the quality of the flower, you know. Which I see it throughout all three of these yep. strains. 
like amazing bud structure. Mm -hmm. Look at these great hairs, like all three different, like very different distinct colors and all, but all like frosty in like their own individual distinct ways. Yeah, we keep a, we keep a good variety. So we harvest, mainly we harvest about one strain a week. Um, what that does is it allows us to still keep like a, a more of a consistent yield overall. Um, so we can hit our numbers, but it also allows us to to focus on the quality of that strain in particular and the needs to that strain. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. And what type of nutrients are you guys running? Uh, or soil. We talked because, yeah, I am no nah, soils. You, I mean. Big too. Yeah. If you're, if you're growing in soil, you're wasting money. This industry is built on a turn and burn mentality and you need to cut costs. And if you're growing in cocoa, soil, any of those, you're wasting your time. Wow. That's my opinion. I'm sure you'll hear some shit back on that. But wow. I like this. No, I like yeah. I like strong uh, so we grow, opinions. Yeah, so we grow in rock wool. What does that mean? It's basically crushed rock that's spun like cotton candy um, that comes in little like uh, six by six squares. That's right. I guess yeah. I did see it. I'm trying to it's, remember what it's it is. It's like drip uh, for your... Uh, like we use it, we my facility's fully built out, state of the art. Uh, and it's all like irrigated. It's all drip irrigated. Right. So okay, that's drip, what it was. It's a real clean medium, um, and the reason that we use it to save money beyond the quality that I get out of it is there's no transplanting. I mean, we transplant from a, a one inch cube into a six inch cube. That's literally going like this to this, and you're done. When I'm paying people to work in my facility and I'm they're having to transplant from one medium to another medium to another medium and up potting and etc. That's labor, that's time, that's money. So how many like stages of transplanting are you skipping? We I skip two, two to three. I wow. mean everyone's different, but yeah. we go from a one, one inch cube into a six inch rock wool block. And that rock will block is where the plant will live the rest of its life cycle. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Right. I think it makes a lot more sense. I mean, it's just clean. Um, my facility's small yet again, so it works for the space. Yeah. But it's definitely, yeah, like space optimization. And the companies know that too. And that's why these companies now are coming out with like basically like cocoa or a soil medium slabs that you add water to and they expand on their own. Right. But yeah. It, but even that is time and money. Watering those slabs, waiting for them to expand. Blah, blah, blah. It just trick. It's a trickle effect. Wow. And so in this game that we're playing, if you're not cutting costs, if you're not, but but keeping the consistency and the quality of your product, you're not going to be in this game very much longer. Wow. That's so interesting. I think it's like such an interesting you know, like theory and mentality and you're obviously using it. Now you're taking it. You're like, it's not just a theory. You're like applying it. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. So we grow in rock wool and we grow with uh, some high end salts. So how did you find this though? Like to ha how many grows have you been through and, you know, to just in order for you to kind of get to this place where you are now, like in just in your grow, you know, history. I mean, so back to the Breckenridge days, I, I wish I knew what I know now back then. Right. And I wouldn't even be doing this. I'd be retired on a beach somewhere. <laughs> uh, as far as like the, uh, the systematic approach to uh, quality consistency, but like it's a turn and burn. It's a pump and dump. Like yeah. people that are sitting on their product for weeks on end after it's harvested because they think they need to cure it and they need to do this and they need to do that. Well, one, that's a lot of bullshit. And two. Yeah. Cause I've been to a lot of other grows where, yeah, they like take me into their warehouse and they're like, look at all this weed that yeah. like, there's no time for that in this industry based off of the, the price per pound. But on top of that. And people want it really fresh. Like people it's don't like fruit off the vine. Yeah. Like we harvest our product and it's sold within 14 days. I like that. Yeah. 
I like it a lot. I don't want it sitting on my shelf, nor, nor does the customer. I don't want it sitting in turkey bags that people are burping and all they're doing is crushing the product and touching it and moving it around. I don't want any of that. I want my product to go to the market as fresh as possible so that the customer can enjoy that, that experience. It's very smart. Yep. And what about trimming? Because what's your what's your trimming theory, and what do you how do you how do you trim? I mean, this is hand trimmed. Okay, I'm like, do you? <laughs> but I know from Aaron from. I mean, I there's guess, some really good machines out there, and there's the if you were. If I you, love your face. You're. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, of course, this is fucking hand trim. What on. kind of question is that? We're on a podcast. This is hand trimmed. <laughs> <laughs> I meant more so trimming crews because Aaron no, has told I, me it's a very kind of contentious thing to like what type of trim crew you have. Sometimes he's heard of like them ripping people off or, you yeah, know, so tipping people and then they other people yeah. steal. Everything at Loyalty is done in house uh, with the, my three employees and myself. My three employees are able to, uh, and I don't even consider them employees, I consider them my partners. Like, they're in it to win it. So respect. I, yeah. Um, yeah. I give them the respect they deserve, and in return, they give it back to me. But those three and myself, um, we do all the trimming ourselves in house. Nice. So we do all the for, we, we do all the cloning, awesome. all the all the growing, uh, all the post production. It's all in house. Wow. With, this uh, is really refreshing. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Very refreshing. Yeah. So, no, that's the thing. It because because that falls into consistency, and there's a lot of really good growers out there. But the problem is, is they don't have the consistency or the structure for the end result. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I do feel like there is a lack of loyalty, if you will, in the more so like. Colorado industry probably I don't know about other markets yeah. too but I just feel like there's I hear so many stories now on the podcast which is amazing or just you know events talking to people like what you said of like I put my heart and soul into this grow for two years and then they just like lay me off like it's nothing yeah and I hear that from like growers, like rosin presser, like washer pressing, like everything from, you know. Well, I mean, the, the the deal is, is that it's business. Yeah. M most of the time it's business. And the guy that and laid- it's the, so like volatile that yeah. people can't just like- And the guy who laid me off, he's a great, great guy. But yeah. two, week, two weeks into COVID, he's wondering how he's cutting costs for his business. Well, you're not taking out the bottom team that does all the- let's call it the grunt work or the, or the harder, the, the, the labor. labor right? <laughs> and you're not going to take out your top guy who is overseeing everything. So you take out the whole middle, You take out the middle man. <laughs> and that was me. But so wow. the problem is, is you see all the threads on Reddit or Facebook or Instagram and these, these employees are talking shit on these companies. Right. There's so much then shit talk on social media. Exactly. Yeah. But go do it yourself. Right. And you, you find you did I like did. you're an example of like look people yeah yeah I walked out that. of that building after shaking the 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 guy who laid me off's hand I made two phone calls I called my dad who's a highly uh, uh, he's a high end he's actually a potato farmer wow um, uh, but that's cool an incredible uh, successful businessman yeah and I called my buddy Josh who owns Artsy Cannabis nice back to back. Two phone calls said, how do I go do this on my own? From that point on, it took me eight eight months to buy a license. Wow. And within almost a year to the date of being laid off, I sold my first legal pound. And within 15 months wow. after that, I uh, sold loyalty to the guy who laid me off. Wow. So it's a grind that's but that's like such an amazing like success story in my opinion so congrats to well, I you appreciate it. we're not done yet you know yeah i know yeah we're just getting started that's it you know uh i'm looking to build the brand is what i'm trying to do now we've we've proved ourselves with the flower now it's like time to really get the brand out there um and the respect we deserve nice yeah coming after the crown i'm coming <laughs> our plan is to be in the the top five 
brands in Colorado, and then we're working on licensing deals to get out of state. Ooh. Yeah. So what's your view on uh, the California market? I think it's I think it's going to bounce back. I'd like to be in the California market. Um, a lot of companies and the corporate companies are running east because it's a big boom out that way. Yeah. All the states are coming on board. So they're going to make room for people to be successful in California. Yeah. They'll figure out the taxes, which are a huge issue out there. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Do you know anyone in like the legacy market out there or in the regulated market? Yeah. I mean, I have a couple guys out there. So what do people say currently? I mean, it's just a waiting game. It's, you know, it's economics. It's the government. It's everything else that has to go on with the <clears> world. <throat> mm-hmm. Um. But it'll turn around. I mean, everything everything should. But I like the, the California market we like. I like Arizona. Um, when Texas comes on board in the next couple of years. New well, Mexico? New Mexico. Got to have love for New Mexico. Um, what about Smoklahoma? Fuck Smoklahoma. <laughs> They're the ones that screwed everything up for everybody. <laughs> you kill me. <laughs> um yeah, I mean it's it's a crazy. I mean, they truly did. World that, down that, there, that that market is so unregulated, and they literally were handing out licenses for yeah. so many years. Any everyone and their mother could get one. And, yeah, and the cartels there running stuff. And, Wait, what? I didn't know this. Yeah, all over. The moment they shut down one girl, another one comes on. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and everyone's backdooring their weed out of the dispensaries they own. And yeah. so what does that happen now? So there's still like a very huge like legacy market and yeah. cartel, I guess, market feeding into that too. Yeah. I mean, wow, that's crazy. I mean, like, I don't like, I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it's just sad. And on top of that, everyone used to come from the East to Colorado to buy the flower and take it home with them. Yeah. The bridge customer. Now they stop in Oklahoma and they don't come to Colorado. Wow. They don't go to California. They go to Oklahoma, right? So, fuck Oklahoma. <laughs> wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. But do you think it will, like, regulate itself, like, given more time? It, you know? it will. It has to. But, no, I don't. I just stay in my lane. That's the goal of loyalty is, like, stay in our lane, be respectful to everyone, um, and just, you know, keep our head down and just keep doing what we're doing. We're trying to... I'm actually working with a music venue out in Ventura, California. Um, nice. They uh, a lot of reggae artists come through there. A lot of hip hop artists. Um, so we're working with them to. Is to, that like uh, LA? Promote the brand, just north of LA. North of LA. Yeah, about 40, 40 miles, hour, hour and a half drive. Oh, okay. Depends on the day. I thought it was more of a suburb. I didn't. Really yeah, know. no, it's just over the over the pass. Okay. So. I feel like it's becoming kind of like a poppin' area. Like, I've just heard it more. Yeah. No, I love it out there. I'm going there on Tuesday for a week. Very nice. Yeah. Are you driving your van out there? No, the van's not driving out yet. It'll be driving out. Hopefully, uh, I'll hopefully have it finished the build out by June. So we're jumping a flight. We're going to go surf for a week. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I work seven days a week, so I have to get away every every fourth or fifth week i dip out oh my gosh you're so you just work for like 30 30 days in a row close, and then close to yeah and then like go on a yeah little i mean vacation. The, the first two years were definitely the it was two years straight of maybe taking a week or two total off um but the last six months because of my team and their dedication and how my partner and i have organized our business i can now start to breathe a little bit that's nice. I'm yeah. happy you can go yeah. enjoy life. Yeah, I mean, we're trying. <laughs> we're trying to find that balance, you know, find that personal life again. I can't believe you work for 30 days straight with no. Yeah. Sometimes it's just popping in and checking on the team, but I spend all morning on the phone, on the computers. Yeah. The phone calls. Emailing. Back, trying to find my money. <laughs> <laughs> straight Christ. up i spend half my days every day on the phone tracking, okay wait tracking back to my other me. question though why don't you make everyone pay on delivery see cash on delivery c-o-t that's it uh <laughs> well you can't make anybody do anything 
but well, I would choose to work with people who only paid cash on delivery. Unfortunately, that's not the way the system's made up currently. Because you said a, a lot of people do. So then what are the conversations lot do, like with they, the people who don't want to do that with you? Well, how does it go? That's just how they've built their 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 dispensaries and built their... Uh, so they say like, that's not a possibility at all for us. We have to do. Yeah, and I mean, so I've then, had to do a lot of things that like I wish I didn't have to do to, yeah. keep, to keep my doors open. Right. Right. To keep my So it's like if you want that business, you have to say, okay. Right. Okay. Got it. Um, Just trying to understand yeah, how that like works. It's more, honestly, the more mom and pop you are, those people pay the COD because they have a good accountant or they don't want to be, <clears throat> they don't want to be caught up in net terms. Yeah. It's the and, larger. Oh, like be in debt to it, people. In debt to people. So, but it's the larger yeah. corporations, the, the guys that own five, six, seven stores. Those are the ones that, you know, they're buying from 50 different people. So your invoice gets caught in the, the stack, you know? Sure. So, but the faster you get paid, the more money you're able to make. But if you're not getting paid on time, you're not making any money. You know, that's the problem. Wow. That's and people don't know that. Super hard. And that's also like when you talk about these uh, employees getting laid off, disgruntled, etc. Like they don't know the back end. They don't know what the owner is doing every day to try to keep the doors open. Right. And sometimes you got to make the cut. You know. Yeah. Wow. Well, but I like to think everything happens for a reason. Uh huh. And it led you to create yeah. this company. So yeah, I feel like people can like either view it as like a notch down or view it as like an opportunity kind yeah. of like That's a way you have up. to you have to see life as that. Is it half full or half empty? I'm going half full every time. Yeah, for sure. Right? I mean, there's days that you grind and you wonder what the hell you're doing or why are we doing this or you know why am I not 20 years back growing in five houses in the mountains, you know, <laughs> snowboarding every day? Because <laughs> those times are gone. So you have to, if you want to play the game, you have to adapt. And you, unfortunately in this game, like unless you're an owner, there's only, it's, there's only like three tiers in this industry. It's like, you're an employee, you're a high level manager, or you're an owner. There's no like, there's no in-betweens anymore. And that's because the price per pound so low because COVID, COVID really hurt that. There was an over expansion during COVID that caused all these people to, to do build outs or go buy more grows and start producing more product. Well, what was everyone doing during COVID? They were sitting at home, they were getting free money. They were spending it on weed and booze and they were, um, it was a, it was like an illusion that wasn't real, you know, like now we're in a correction state. So there's a lot of garbage ass weed out there. And a lot of people are selling pounds for four to $500 just to keep their doors open, which is flooding the market, which then in, re in return hurts the, the brands who are trying to put out, you know, the higher end quality that deserve the higher price point. Yeah. Yeah. So what type of, do you only have one price point with your like bud and flower that you're producing or like, do you sell at multiple price points or does it just depend on the dispensary? We leave it up to the dispensary, but when I sell to a dispensary, like I know what we're worth, you know, I know where we need to be, but also, I also know I'm only two years into this game, uh, with loyalty. And so right now we're trying to build brand equity. The more people that know loyalty, the better off we're going to be in the long run, you know? Um, but these larger companies that are growing dog shit weed and flooding the market are the ones hurting everyone. <laughs> I won't name names, but. <laughs> so what did your friend at um, Artsy say to you on the phone when you called him? Oh, he was great. He gave me, he just said, listen, man, this is what you're going to have to, if this is what you want to do, you just start here. And he said, once you get to, once you do this, call me back. And he probably thought I was full of shit and wasn't going to do it. But within a week or two or a month, I called him back. 
and we he gave me another list nice and it's i went and I, and I did that and then it just continually grew until i bought my license you know um so he he gave me nothing but support and uh you know, uh, he gave me guidance as far as like how to do it. So he's so a, good, a great mentor. Yeah. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. He's been in this industry. Uh, well we go all the way back to Breckenridge, but yeah, he's survived the storms for the last 10 years in this industry. Um, done really well for himself and he's helped me out. Um, I worked under him or with him. I've partnered with him on other projects. Uh, there was a consulting business that I worked out in Vegas for six months under him, uh, which was a cool experience. That was when Nevada just was a year or two in to be in legal. We were growing in a, I always grow in these unconventional grows, but this one was a, a 50,000 square foot rolling, uh, roller skating rink in, in the middle of the desert <laughs> that they had converted into a grow. Um, oh my lord yeah so i went and oversaw that but yeah to your question you know it's just about keeping your head down and doing it you know i had a whiteboard in my apartment um just phone calls phone calls phone calls for five four to five months um until you're off the ground and then it's up to you to figure it out so Another great dude that helped me along the way, a buddy of mine, he owns a company in Oregon called Garden First. Um, they do some high-end flower. They've been on the Can of Cribs uh, show or, nice. pot or whatever it is. That's uh, cool. Yeah, and his name's Dre. And for six months, uh, Dre and I, every single Tuesday, had a phone call. Uh, and he would check in on me make sure I'm doing what I was supposed to do that week. And then we talk about the next week. And that went on for six months. Wow. Yeah. You got some good, good people in your life to yeah. help you. Yeah, I do. It's pretty awesome. That's incredible. Yeah. Pretty grateful. Wow. Uh-huh. If you could um, sit down with any big, like the owners of any big, like, I don't know, Starbuds, Green Solution, mm -hmm. a huge, you know, dispensary, MedMen, whatever. Right. Like, what would what would you say to them? Like, about, you know, the cannabis, like, from your perspective, like, that you think, like, if they change, like, the whole industry could be a better place? I mean, the industry is only going to be a better place if the quality of flour continues to be consistent. The bigger guys... Those companies you name, they own large scale grows. They have hundreds, if not thousands of employees. And for them to manage that, to keep it as tight as this industry needs will never happen. So they're in their own lane. And I just- Like they're too big to have the type of quality control that you're saying is necessary? Basically, yeah. And cause a lot of quality isn't, the, isn't what's on the plant, it's the post-production. It's what goes on after the after the harvest, after the after the growing, and that's where companies fail. Um, and what do they do specific? Like like we were saying earlier, is like keeping the flower too long and like handling it too much. Handling it too much, keeping it too long. Uh, if they if you choose to use a trim machine, which there's a lot of good ones out there, those companies probably aren't using the good ones. They're using the ones that are ripping up the product. Right. And then they're growing so much of their own flower that it sits in a, a vault. You know, Starbucks has a vault. Thousands of pounds are just sitting in this spot. Wait, really? I didn't know this. Oh, yeah. How do you know this? <laughs> have you seen it? I know this. I know this. Yeah, they have a one. They have a specific location where all their product goes. And then that's where it gets distributed out of to all their stores. But yet again, it's handling, handling, handling. Um, yeah. Also, it comes down to genetics. A lot of the genetics these these corporations are running are they're ten year old strains. They're not they're not what the kids want. They're not the new shit. They're not like you always have to be thinking ahead in this game. And these people, th those larger corporations, are run by uh, 
uh, you know, a board of directors. They don't know. Old white men. Old white that men. That don't actually smoke uh-huh. at all or, you know, are in tune with the culture. It's true. So I, I respect those people, too. They have their lane, and I just know the lane that loyalty is going to go down. And our our ultimate goal is to, to build the brand um, with cannabis and beyond and, uh, you know, have the reputation of the higher end product. So what do you think of a uh, celebrity cannabis brands? Uh, there's only a couple out there that I, I think are legit to enough like, to like be valued yeah i mean just because you're a celebrity doesn't mean you you slap your name on something it doesn't mean anything right who's growing that product right how is that product packaged where is it sold but there are there are people within the industry i mean we've we've sold weed to willie nelson's company where they'll pre the well they'll package loyalty into willie nelson Right, but it doesn't say like your. It says it on the box, like the box. On the box, okay. Yeah, it says like William Nelson buy Loyalty Farms, right? But Willie's gonna be gone soon. The kids aren't gonna know Willie, you know. Down <laughs> They're gonna the, be like, who the, the fuck is that? Yeah, exactly. So like, <laughs> that's the problem with that type of deal, you know. Oh, but then there's someone so like Wh- like Wiz Khalifa, like the Khalifa Kush and the Kushmans, and they're branding. Like they have a sick colorway and a clean look, and Wiz is the he's the shit, you know, he's the man. So, Wait, so that's where Cushman's came from? Is no, like not the, his not, genetics. Not the strain Cushman's, oh. but he has a new strain that just launched. Oh, okay. Under I think it's called Khalifa Kush. Oh, okay. Khalifa Cushman's. So he's got the KK, the Khalifa Kush, and then they just dropped another one. Got you. Yeah. Okay, I was like, wait, that's where that strain came from. No, nah, yeah. So what do you think of the, like, push toward, like, back towards, like, the OG genetics? Because I've been also hearing some chit-chatter about people and, like, even, like, breeders and, like, caregivers and stuff being, like, I just, I'm on the hunt for, like, the best, like, blue dream and, like, you know, there's, I don't, I just. you can't find them anymore because they've been overcrossed so many times. Yeah. So if somebody does have them and you can get them, you shouldn't run your whole library under those, but you should have one or two novelty strains. You know, Do you I, guys have novelty strains? I did initially and I don't now. <laughs> I don't have room. Like, uh, yeah. And, you know, my veg room is small. We keep our moms in rotation, so we're not hanging on to them. I also um, think that's really smart, which I'd always heard that they kept moms for like years. Yeah. No. every time we clone down a genetic we'll discard those moms and then when we go when those plants go into flower we'll keep uh, you know three to four of the of the better looking plants and transplant them as our new moms and that's how you smart that's how you can keep the cycle yeah so smart but and that keeps out like i feel like like pests and other types of like yeah it keeps things clean and fresh yeah yeah totally so we did i i had like the original afghani it was a great strain yielded well yeah but at the time people don't really want it but things are coming full circle in the industry and people are realizing like oh where's that or where's this or you know the first i'm from Greeley, colorado we grew up on mexican brick like, same yeah in missouri <laughs> yeah but towards the end of high school we started getting some kush out of fort collins um like like original blueberry that original blueberry is no longer in existence or at least wow. not around but wait was that from the medical market uh this was just from the game oh okay like, yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah if you can find them, keep them, hold on to them. I know a lot of dudes on the West Coast still have those old heads strains, you know. But every all the kids, they want this perp. Yeah. They want the... And that's what sells. That's what sells. So, you know, as growers, we have to do what sells. There's a movement on the West Coast. It's make weed green again. It's like they're, you know... What does that like really mean? It means like, yo... Stop with the purple? We've, we've overcrossed the perp. <laughs> 
like the gelatos and everything else. Oh like, my god, that's hilarious! Bring, bring back green weed. Like, I didn't know yeah. they were talking about like money green. Oh, I'm sure they're talking about that too. And I was like, wait, <laughs> uh, yeah. do they mean yeah? Okay, that's hilarious. Yeah, because everyone is like, oh, give me that purple, that perp. Yeah. Like, we got that perp. The perp. <laughs> I mean, the West Coast sets. I the trends, like the frosty, so. like frosty stuff, like Mac Miracle Alien cookies. I feel like yeah. it's a good one. This pink runs has been a banger me. for us lately. Yeah, it reminds. Me, oh. I love. What is the lineage of pink runs? Uh, I'd have to look at my list, strain list. Yeah, I'm like I don't, need, I don't know any of these yeah. what lineages. I do have a full strain list. But we, we killed the phone, so. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Keep the phone off. That's good. Call. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. that's so good. So, what would you, if you could talk to yourself now, but like back when you were in your Breckenridge days, like you're saying, like, what would you tell yourself? Save that money. <laughs> Save your money. I, I have another mentor, uh, dude, that's a little older than me that when we were in the game together, he was always telling me, you're moving too fast. You need to chill. You need to save your money. Boom, boom. <laughs> but I never thought it'd end. So we were traveling and we were partying. We were doing our thing. Nice. Save your money. So you were like spending the money you were making on like yeah. fun experiences. I mean, back then, if you had four lights and you grew 20 pounds a week a month and you times that by four, because we were getting 4,400 a pound back then. Yeah. So you didn't, you needed a closet to make a hell of a lot of money. So the money was good. Wow. Every, everything we bought was just a pound. Oh, that's just a pound. We'll go buy. That's cool. We'll go on this trip. It's just a pound. It's a pound. <laughs> that's such a crazy mentality. Yeah. Thinking it would never end. Never end. Never end. And then the medical market came into place. Then the legal market came into place. Then the price per pound continued to drop to where now, you know, people aren't getting bought. The average current market rate through the state for legal sold flour is like 650 bucks right now sheesh which means that 90 percent of every grower out there is selling 600 to 700 pounds a week oh my that's so sad yep so so and sad that's because of the corporations the oversaturation a mix of uh bouncing back from the covid boom um and then, like I said, all the shitty weed on the market. Holy fuck. Yep. <laughs> so I would tell myself, save your money. Just as I tell my niece and nephew, just stay in school. <laughs> stay yes. In school. How much money do you, like, if you would have saved, like, most of the money that you made? I'd be retired. <laughs> I'd be retired. Oh, my God. Yeah. That is, oh. Wow. Yep. yep. That's incredible. But it was a good run and it's it got me off the ground. So I went from Summit County snowboarding, growing to So you just learned how to grow at home, like with yeah, your friends. One of my business partner, he's one of the OGs of that day, of that era. And he taught me what he knew. And then I learned a little bit more throughout time and then learned from other people. Right. Just kept building. And then we call it the Great Migration because everybody from Summit County decided to migrate to Denver. <laughs> to get... This is what Austin was talking about too, I feel was like. He? Yeah. yeah, it's true. I mean, we had our houses in Breck and everyone wanted to come to the city to get a warehouse because you could, you know, with the medical cards, you could go grow with a warehouse. And then we have wow. a bunch of warehouses and then, I mean, but then that finally led into going legal. And so I ran and helped start a company they're still in business. They're doing well. Um, and then that led to me going to Vegas. Then that led me coming back and working for the guy who let me off. So, and then that led to loyalty. Wow. Trickle. What a chain of events. Yeah. W weed has taken me a lot of places and given me a lot. So interesting. Yeah. Very grateful. <sighs> so I think it would be amazing if, Boulder had a really sick like consumption lounge what like 
I, what do we need to do to make that happen? Is it all just like le- legislation, like the Boulder City Council doesn't? Yeah, Boulder's tough. I'm fortunate it. because my business is located in Boulder County, which makes it a little bit easier, like, to navigate and work. But like, you're not in people. Like, the people city tell me if, if you are in Bol- if you're in prop, uh, Boulder proper, and you own a business and you're successful, like, you're killing it. Like, Boulder's one of the hardest places to operate businesses ever because the city makes it that hard for. Them. Wow, yeah. like so I don't know I don't, why? Just I don't like know all... about the lounges and stuff. I mean, I know they're kind of trying to pop up yeah. in Denver. But Yeah, have you ever been to like Tetra? So I know the dudes over at Tetra. Dwayne. Yeah. But I used uh, to go there a lot I mean, like even, before even the he, pandemic. Like they're not even open right now. Yeah, I'm no. Pre- right? No, I don't think they they're they still, still going through like the deals and it's been two, three years down the line. Yeah, to get like the proper <clears throat> licensing. Right. And I even went to like the ribbon cutting of yeah. like and the mayor was there too. I yeah. Think, right? Yeah. And then there's there was still some hold up. I don't know. Yeah. They needed some other paperwork that they didn't have. <laughs> like it's all that's what I hear I've heard for years. It's always paperwork, you know. <sighs> I don't know about consumption lands. I mean that's for people like that that's cool yeah i just think it would be for you know a lot of people rent in boulder Mm -hmm. and i just think that's a market that's like not really tapped into for in like the student there's a lot of like students and postgraduates you know in their all 20s like 20s to 30s I'm all for event spaces, you know. It's untapped market it in Boulder. Is. It is. <laughs> Do I need to run for city council? You might. It sounds like you got something going on. <laughs> yeah. McCarta for city council. That's it. 2025. Vote. <laughs> yeah, this is your <laughs> reminder to vote. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that is great. Oh, fuck. Yep. So are you happy that you have like a cannabis business? Like, do you find it? rewarding and worth it or like what would you tell people that want to do what you do the hardest thing i've ever done but very proud of it uh you know like if you got if you like i would tell people don't ever enter the weed game (laughs) like that's the truth i mean even when i was building loyalty up and i'm watching youtubes and i'm watching burner from cookies uh explain his game and like how he did it he'll tell you straight up in every interview off the bat like if you don't do it it's not the business to be in like it, there is no money in this like yeah i may i'm making a living and i'm being able to like you know support myself but like if you like think you're gonna get rich from weed you're you're delusional yeah you know that those days are gone so it's 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 farming that's all it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's more so like doing it for credit and like testing yourself, like yeah. kind of what you're saying. I mean, being an entrepreneur is the best thing like yeah. I've ever done in my life. Um, it gives me the freedom to make my own decisions. Um, and it, it gives me, you know, a reason to wake up every day with like a drive and a passion. Um, And it's changed my mindset, like to where I'll go. And this isn't a knock. I mean, people have to do what they have to do, but to go and work at a gas station or a grocery store or these odd jobs, like I was at the admission center the other day and I'm like looking around, I'm like, this is the craziest place I've ever been. Like, but somebody wakes up every day to pay their bills to go there. And that's what I'm not ever trying to do again, you know? Same. Yeah. No, financially free doesn't mean money. I mean, it means like I'm not a slave to the to the general game, you know, the society set up. Yeah. The nine to five, the assembly line, you know. Yeah. So what's your view of like minimum wage and do you like apply that to your business or like, you know, yeah. what do you think people should be paid per hour and stuff like that? Everything's more expensive now. It's crazy. So every the price of everything keeps going up, but the price per pound keeps going down. So businesses what is life? Businesses have to evolve and figure out how to counter that. 
Um, and the only way to retain good employees is to pay them what they deserve. But they only deserve what they get paid is if they earn it, right? They show up every day. They work hard. They don't cut corners. They uh, attention to detail, consistency. Those people should be rewarded. But minimum wage, I mean, it's always going to keep going up. Um, so as an employer, I'm always looking to cut costs, you know, without hurting my team. Fortunately, because I'm such a small business at the current moment, uh, and we'll probably always retain a small side of things, but like I pay my, my team gets paid pretty well compared to the, the guys down the street. It's probably not what they want, you know, but <laughs> well, right. It, Everyone wants more yeah, but we'll than get, they're making, but we can get there if we work together and we continue to set our goals and we continue to, to these leaps and bounds, then I'm going to reward my team as well as I can. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like kicking a ball. Like some days I kick the ball, it goes like 20 feet. Some days I kick it, it goes 20 yards. Some days I kick it, it goes two inches. But as long as that ball goes this way and not that way, we're going to be all right. <laughs> yeah. We need to go forward. <laughs> forward. <laughs> not backwards. Right, that's it. Yeah. Forward. <laughs> I like that mentality. Mm -hmm. So how are you staying like, I feel like it's kind of been the theme of the entire podcast, but a little bit more directly, like how are you staying like super competitive and like surviving in these times when there's literally so much like people closing, like businesses just shutting their doors, right. selling, uh, consolidating, like having like big people just buying them out, whatever. Yeah. Uh, what's going to keep us in business is the consistency of the product. If, if the, if the product, if somebody goes and buys this bag and there's nothing, you know, if, if it fluctuates every time they buy this bag, they're not going to continue to buy this bag. Mm -hmm. Right. So everything is consistency. Uh, I'm not in a hurry to be some big guy in this big world of weed. Like I just want to stay in my lane uh, have a, you know, one thing I, we worked really hard for is the, you know, the 15, uh, between 15 and 20 genetics that we have every year are like, they're what the trends are. We follow the trends. Um, but overall it's consistency. If you're not consistent and if you're not involved in your day to day, so my team now they're growing this flower without me having to necessarily babysit them all the time which now gives me the freedom to start building the brand. And with building loyalty as a brand, uh, that will create brand equity, which shouldn't come back full circle um, to where it creates a higher demand for our product. Nice. So that's the business game. That's the model, you know? So working with people out of state, working with uh, musicians and artists and doing collabs, that's something we're going to start doing uh, over this next year. Yeah, it's going to be good. I love that. Yeah. <clears throat> That's great. <laughs> I'm going to hit another. Hit that bomb. Yes. And then I do have like. I might even have one more of these. Two questions left that I have yeah. on hand. <laughs> Where am I? I used to wake up every day and rip about 10 of those before I'd even walk out the door. I've been there. Now, if I hit that once, I'd probably be on the floor <laughs> under your desk talking to you. <laughs> wow. So what, what changed? Like, how did you get out of that? Uh, that loop. It, I just cut back my smoking once I like about year two into loyalty knowing that I needed to be more like efficient and present in my, with my time. Um, I'm a blunt smoker. I love, I love backwoods. I yep. love smoking blunts. I grew up. I've also been there. I grew up rolling <laughs> swishers. Uh, then I got hooked on the backwoods for a while and I got off of those. So yeah. yeah. Blunts. 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 <laughs> 
Blunts for breakfast. That's it. Blunts for lunch. I'm a a hip hop lover. Blunts for dinner. Yeah, it's always a blunt. My best friend and I going snowboarding every day. We'd we'd uh, we'd smoke a blunt, or we'd 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 get a a pack of blunts, a naked juice, and a Cliff Bar, and that was our that was our breakfast every day for about four years. Go snowboard for eight hours and then. Breakfast of champions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Naked juice, cliff bar, and a blunt. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's also we run a we run everything under only the finest. That's our business. That's our brand. That's our motto. I love that. And so uh, he <laughs> only was, he the was the uh, yeah he was the cat that uh, dropped OTF into the world. I like that a lot. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. <clears throat> How did you know like your business partner was the right person to do this with basically? Cause we were kind of talking business partners before we oh, right. started yeah. recording. Um, one thing I needed to do when I was on my mission to start loyalty was find money. You know, I had a, I had some money put aside, but it wasn't enough. Um, and so I put a list of about 20 people together that I thought would be interested in taking this journey with me. Uh, and he was, to be dead honest, he was the only one that, that bit. Amazing. And and in this industry right now, he questions that every day. (laughs) Well, he's my dog. He's my, yeah. (laughs) I wouldn't be, we wouldn't be sitting in this chair without him. Wow. I wouldn't be here. Amazing. So, yet again, highly grateful for that dude. He's a smart entrepreneur himself. He owned a nightclub in Breckenridge, owns a restaurant up there. Um, he's in a transition right now, but he's always been ahead of the curve. Awesome. Yeah. So, he, uh, he holds Shout out to yeah, his your, your yeah, man. Yeah, he's my man, <laughs> Bill. Bill's the dude. Bill, we love you. Thanks yep. for making loyalty happen. Yep. Loyalty Farms, it's so good. Um, Okay, last two questions that I ask everyone. Okay. What do you see with the future of legalization for cannabis, Um, like from a market perspective for Colorado, and then also, you know, like nationwide and fuck worldwide? I mean, at this point, it just needs to go federal and get it over with. They're dragging their goddamn feet. Allowing each state to just do it on their own terms is like, there's some pros and cons with it. Um, it just legalize it already. Like we already know what it is. Everyone's already smoking it, using it. There's zero reason for it to be uh, a criminal offense anywhere. So, and then on top of that, the moment they do that, the banks will open up and we can go uh, get loans like con- conventional businesses and be able to expand and build, build, build our companies, pay our taxes. I paid more taxes now than I ever have in my life. So <laughs> I can legalize this shit. Right. Cause you can't like write anything off basically. No, no, it's, yeah. It's, right? pre- it's pretty tough. Okay. Just yeah. want to under, I thought I understood, but yeah. just to clarify. No, there isn't. An, an, no. You can have side LLCs to try to write things off, you know, like clothing and like marketing and like branding and all that type of stuff. But sure. No, nah, well, there's no write-offs. We pay a lot in taxes every month and we're small. So the Starbuds out there, they're paying a whole lot of taxes. Damn. Yep. So let's legalize it, right? Yes. Make things easier. I would be mm-hmm. interested to see, yeah, what happens then with the interstate commerce and just especially with production and if brands can then like take Wana brands, for example, they're already right. in so many states. Yep. If they would just have like one processing facility and then ship it Distribute out. It, yeah. Everywhere. That's it. Yeah. Time will tell. I mean, it's just, <laughs> all this is, is agriculture, big ag, you know, Yeah. coming into play. Oh, stop. What if Nestle fucking came yeah. in there? Like, oh, throw we're growing cannabis now they got their eyes on it everyone does people are just watching but more people have lost money over the last couple years in this cannabis space than ever before 
So I told my boyfriend not to invest in cannabis stocks because I lost money in cannabis stocks. Yeah. And he was like, oh, well, I just want to try it. I'm like, don't, like, don't do it. Like, I'm telling you, I lost like five grand and like, just don't oh, do for it. Sure. Like, yeah. and he's like, yeah, I lost like five grand. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I told you, you not to do you it. You need to know, you know, there's a couple good ones out there. I'm not a financial he, advisor. He was invested in like, yeah, like Tilray yeah, and the, like. No, that, that's the, those guys, because those companies, what they do is they raise more money. They don't, they're not profitable. And they won't be profitable until it becomes federally legal. For the most part, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a five to 10 year run at best. Oh and they'll just continue raising money, funneling it in, buying more stores, funneling it in, buying more stores. They'll continue to grow shitty weed, <laughs> flood the market. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stop growing but, shitty weed. Yeah. Say no to <laughs> shitty weed. Yeah. And that's what's so sad. I feel like it's such like the, dile- I don't know, the dilemma of cannabis is like, I've obviously, it's good to have the big people because they can get it to in other places and to people that need it. Um, but then the medicine is not up, up to the quality that we, that it should be and that we're advocating for. Mm-hmm. So it's like a catch twenty two. And if, if it you is, will. if it is low grade or mid grade, sell it as that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. But don't sell it next to the products like loyalty or some of these other guys that are right killing it and working hard and trying to like make value of their brand and then it's all getting sold for the same. Do you think it will like even itself out and how long will it take for like the Colorado market? Especially because it was down for the first time ever, like last, or like- It's as low as it's ever been. Yeah. Prices for a pound of weed have never been this low in the, the history of legalization of Colorado. Right. And with the recession, like- What it's gonna take is it's gonna take the companies to start paying the growers on time. <laughs> Back to the beginning. <laughs> Full circle. Who pays on time? And it's gonna take people understanding quality, uh, the consumer it's education of the consumer because the consumers don't know they don't know what goes on behind the door they don't even know where most of their product comes from you know very sad very sad so we gotta you know tighten it up when everyone deserves weed like this that's right and we grow a really high-end quality product and there's there's a lot of growers out there that can grow as good and there's a lot of growers that i'm like i'm chasing that are growing better you know but a lot of it has to do with genetics nowadays too if you're ahead of the curve on genetics you know you can you should be able to grow some pretty pretty good product but everyone screws up with their post-production you can grow good weed all day on a plant but you screw it up in the post-production you're gonna kill your value so are they like curing it too long or Besides letting too many people like Except, handle it. I mean, I'll just be blunt. I won with with one of my other partners in the past. We won <clears throat> we won third place uh, High Times Cup for Sativa Flower. And we submitted a strain that we had harvested 10 days before. And we got a third medal. And nobody knew that mm-hmm. that weed was harvested 10 days before we submitted it. Right? When, when would they have like thought or like... When well, would people think, or what's the average? I mean, not, like for I people said, who submitted our do you product, think? we 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 like our product out the door within the first, like fourteen days. But if you look back at the textbooks and the history of growing and the curing, like you know, people will hang it for two weeks, then they'll trim it, and then they'll cure it for two weeks, three weeks, like so. Oh, everyone's wow, yeah. different. Okay. But like you, so some people would like think in theory that that's not like cured sure well enough or like right too wet possibly but Colorado's so dry that it's like it dries out so fast it is yeah wow so there's just a misconception but if you're a business if you're a legal cannabis business and you're doing those old traditional ways of growing you're losing wow you can't cut corners but I want my fruit fresh yeah right I want it good 
And like you said, like with not, you're not using traditional soil. No, but Rockwell's been around like forever too. Okay. I mean, even. So what do you in, think about? I've always grown in Rockwell. 20 okay. years ago, I was growing in Rockwell. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's a bit of a push for like living soil and using, you know, That's like fine. stuff with like. But keep that at your home. Mushrooms and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I've had some mushrooms pop up. The only thing we will plant into soil currently is our moms. So our moms live in soil because they're, they're there for three to four months, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I've used some soil from Fox Farm where we have a couple mushrooms pop up here and there, you know, which is good. It means you have yeah. a good ecosystem, yeah. right? But uh, you just don't think that's like necessary for every plant when you're like no, churning but, and burning, like you're because saying. Because of the price per pound. Yeah. If we were getting $4,000 pounds, like 15, 10, 15 years ago, take your time do the living soil do all that but if yeah. you're a if you are a legal cannabis company in this market growing legal soil or living soil like i don't knock on you for that but i don't see unless you can show me different which i'm open yeah like show me show prove me wrong <laughs> but to me that just seems like time and money and when the end result's still the same yeah yep this isn't a home grow anymore. I, I like your perspective. <laughs> I think it's really refreshing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, awesome. And then the final question I ask everyone, if you could smoke some loyalty farms with anyone, <clears throat> usually celebrity, uh, but like alive or dead, um, or it can be a fictional character. Okay. Who would it be and why? Oh, man. There's so many good ones. You can say a couple. People always say a couple. Oh, do they? Yeah. <laughs> they just hit with the generic ones. like. Bob, I, Bob I hear Marley so and... many like Wiz Khalifa's yeah. and like Snoop Dogg's. And... Yeah. No, I mean, I, I've smoked with Wiz. My, my what? Yeah, my best friend uh, is... Uh, why didn't you open with this? <laughs> this is how we end it. <laughs> Fuck yes. Let's hear about it. Yeah, my uh, one of my best friends is uh, Tattoos Wiz. So when he comes to Denver... Shut up. Uh, sometimes I'm around and we're able to smoke. So there used to be a nightclub downtown called Native Hotel. Wait, I've been there. Yeah. And so... A few years back. I got really there. drunk there one time. I believe that. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, wait, but what was the experience like smoking with well, Wiz I mean, Khalifa? It was, I was standing with him smoking and there was groupies, so he wasn't in, interested oh. in me. But It wasn't like you were having like a thoughtful conversation no, no, with him? not it? at all. Not at all. <laughs> but he is coming out next month or this month with Burner to play Red Rocks, so... I'm hoping maybe we can link up with them. So are you going to go to that show? I think so. We'll have a loyalty tent in the parking lot. Maybe I come, should. Come by for some flour. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I don't have plans to go, but that sounds yeah. pretty epic. So yeah. I would. But to answer your question, probably like, uh, like Mac Miller. Great one. Oh, we I'm, miss you, Mac. I'm a Mac fan. Always have been. I mean, if you weren't, we probably couldn't be friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, yes. That's a great one. It is a good one. That'd be epic. So epic. Oh, well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was amazing. Absolutely. Um, where yeah, where else can people find you again? Loyalty Farms. Where can they buy it? And then social media. Yeah, so uh, we're in and out of thirty to fifty dispensaries around the state, but bow, 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 bow. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> air horn. <Bomble. laughs> uh, but Eclipse and Boulder has been a huge supporter. Rocky Road Aurora, uh, huge supporter. Cut above. Cut above. Denver. Um, uh simply pure nice just, that's yeah, great the, places yeah we just got in there in the highlands that's a um, good one and then if you're on the road this summer going around camping uh strawberry fields 
Nice. That's right off the highway, off 70. Pretty much. Yeah, they have four or five stores. So That's the one I always see. I, yeah, <laughs> Idaho Springs. Yes. Uh, and then if you're in Summit County, uh, High Country Healing carries us as well. Love that. So, yeah. Perfect. Uh, Instagram, Loyalty Farms, straight across. No periods or underscores. Nope. And there's a there's a, a copycat out there. So make sure you look for our brand or our logo and our our brand because some dude's trying to rip us right now. What is wrong with people? Why did they do that? I know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I think are they like trying to sell weed and then like using your Yeah, he's using my my name to sell Christ. to sell weed. So Ugh, yikes. Yep. But look for the bomb, and that's what we're growing. Bomb. <laughs> yes. Wait to name these strains again. Pink runs. Just had it. That was amazing. Yep. I need to try this one still. Which one was this? That's one? the gummy worms. Gummy worms. Fuck. One of that our was... newer strains. Yes. And then this uh, one was a sherbet something. That's the sherb cream pie. Sherb cream pie. Wow. Yeah. But we have, like amazing. I said, a, a, a library about fifteen genetics. That's uh. We'll uh, we'll be posting something on our Instagram, just like a lineup, a spring summer drop of all our genetics. Yummy! And then we always have a couple new ones like coming in the door. But by the time you get them, you grow them out, you clone them. You know, you'll see them more in the fall. Awesome. But, yeah, we've we've done pretty good dark horse genetics. I get a lot of <clears> my, <throat> a lot of my uh, oh yeah, they're cuts very from those guys. Very reputable. Yep. Um, and then I got a couple other guys that have helped me out and. So a little something different than the guy down the street. Yeah. You have such a great support system. I it's do. great to hear about it. Yep. And so awesome to know you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. This yeah. has been fun. Yay. Thanks again for coming. Yeah, totally. So fun. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks everyone and stay high. Thank you.